Hey there, today we're at Universal Orlando Resort. I want to bring you out today to check out some new things that are going on at Universal Studios. And wow, there's a lot. There's already Halloween Horror Nights 2021 theming visible in the park as of today. There's been some big announcements, there's a lot happening. Plus we're just gonna have a fun day here at Universal. So, if you're ready, let's go. I love bright blue summer days like this, even if it is a gazillion degrees. The Tokyo Olympics are happening soon, so they're still celebrating that here as well. There are a lot of new fixtures and lighting all over the park, even outside of the park. Of course, first stop is here at the Five and Dime. They've been releasing brand new Halloween Horror Nights 2021 preview merchandise about once a week or every other week lately. And there was a new drop this week. Today's drop? is Beetlejuice. The juice is loose. The ghost with the most. It's showtime. And every other Beetlejuice quote you can think of, now's the time to whip them out. I believe they did drop some Beetlejuice preview merch back in March, but it sold out so quickly I never got to see it. So I'm really glad it's back here. It looks like right now they've got a lot of sizes. They go up to 3XL. Oops, yeah. Wow, another black light reactive apparel, just like the last few shirts. It's got the Beetlejuice Halloween Horror Night sleeve. A team member just let me know that this shirt actually goes up to 4X, so you might have to ask. I'm not sure if they have them out, but they do have them, and that's always good to know. Last time I was here, when they dropped the Haunting of Hill House shirts, they were out of the Jack is Back shirts, but it looks like they've restocked, and those are back out too. This is the one drop that I missed, the Frankenstein and Bride of Frankenstein shirt, so... Oh my gosh, please have medium. Oh my goodness, I don't know if they have medium. Oh yes, they do, okay. Looks like they've got all the sizes, so this is really good. I love this shirt. They also have Bride of Frankenstein specific merch just for her because the house that they have announced and that is gonna be part of this year's lineup is the Bride of Frankenstein house. There's also some Bride of Frankenstein glow-in-the-dark wall art that is super cool. I really like it. In case you don't know, Halloween Horror Nights is the premier Halloween event here in Orlando. It takes place during the Halloween season. It usually is just very highly attended and very, very popular. It's so high quality the work that goes into it is amazing with storytelling. It's just a step above regular haunted houses and spooky events. It's a whole themed experience. It's incredible. So if you've never done it, it's definitely worth doing. Even if you think it might be too scary for you, you can pick and choose which of the houses you enter. And once you're here, it's kind of hard to not want to do them all. But also the entire park is transformed with atmosphere, mooding, scare zones, music, special food, special drinks. It is one of the most fun things you can do. I highly, highly recommend trying it at least once. And for those of you who, like me, are huge Halloween Horror Nights fans and you already know the drill, you know how exciting this all is to see merch, decorations, announcements happening in July because they normally start happening this summer and we start to get excited. I wonder how all the monsters feel about Beetlejuice invading their territory. All stocked up, purchased the Beetlejuice shirt and the Frankenstein shirt, very happy. If you don't know, they did cancel Halloween Horror Nights in 2020, but they did sort of a modified version of it and several of the houses were already built like the Beetlejuice house. So they did open it last year on Halloween weekend only. It was amazing, I did it, it was incredible. I do have a video up about it on my channel if you wanna see it, but they're bringing it back for next year. So if you missed it, no need to be sad. Definitely come back to do it though. It was, like they do kind of a mix of scary houses and funny fun houses, and this was like a mix of both, and it was just, mm, it was the best. All right, let's move on with our day because there's more to see. Looks like the Simpsons camper's out, Universal Studios or bust. I agree. This part of the park is normally a scare zone during Halloween Horror Nights, and I can already see this sort of trust tower thing here. It's covered in green. That is definitely gonna be for something Halloween Horror Nights related, scare zone related here. And right here we've got three more of these. That's exciting. Pretty recently there was a big Fast and the Furious display here. They've taken that down right in front of animal actors. They've got these misters on because it's so, so, so hot today. A lot of people have been in them, but the wind is kind of carrying the mist all over the place. So I've tried to kind of stand in them, but I can't seem to get a lot of mist on me. And I don't really know if it's helping, but 
still worth a try. I'm now over by the Men in Black Alien Attack ride, which I love, by the way. And normally there are some Horror Nights houses tucked back here. Let's see if we see any signs of anything around here. Back here behind a line for Men in Black, we can see the facade of a Halloween Horror Nights house and we know that it's gonna be a Cary, Ohio themed house. If you get in line for the Men in Black Alien Attack ride, you can get a really good clear look at this. This is so exciting. So Cary, Ohio is a real town that one of the early designers for Halloween Horror Nights is from, and they've used it as the fictional setting for many of the interconnected stories of Halloween Horror Nights through the years. And if you wanna learn more about it, you can check out Expedition Theme Park's video about the history of Cary, Ohio and Halloween Horror Nights. But I just wanna look at it and it just, I'm, I'm just, I'm over the moon. See this fan right here? I'm its biggest fan. That is much needed. I found a fan and I don't wanna move from this spot. But wow, just from that little stroll from the front of the park to back here, we already see so many signs of Halloween Horror Nights, including the full blown like facade, well not full blown, I'm sure there's more to come, but like the actual uncovered signage for a Cary, Ohio themed house. By the way, I did a little braid inside my ponytail today. I was trying to kind of do like a Black Widow thing, but she has like the little braids under. Don't know if it really worked. Also, too hot for all that, but I tried. I'm heading towards the Diagon Alley, London area of the park, and here's another truss. Oh look, some more construction. <laughs> Just kidding, these guys are part of the entertainment. We've made it over to the New York area of the park and I think I have a lot of cool things to show you here, including these guys. What's going on here? I think we're about to get mummied. We escaped. That was a close call, but guess what we didn't escape? More Halloween Horror Nights. Already seeing more covered up things so performers can stand in them. Sometimes they're lighting, sometimes they're signage. This one, because of the ladder and because of the shape, that's definitely gonna be a stand for a scare actor to stand in. Maybe they'll be dancing, maybe they'll be calling out to the crowd, who knows? But I am so ready for it. And that's right here in front of good old Stillman's Gym. Can you feel the heat blasting through your screen there? Oh boy. Well, 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 what do we have here? a nearly uncovered Halloween Horror Nights themed thing. So this looks like toxic buckets. It looks like toxic oozes coming out of them. There are some symbols on them. I don't know what this is from. I don't know what movie. I don't know if this is like an original concept. Part of it is covered. Probably the part that would allow us to identify it, but if any of this looks familiar to you, let me know. This is so cool that it's just out like this. While I was out there looking at the toxic sludge bucket barrel things, it got really, really hot. Uh, I'm not kidding you when I tell you it's 100 degrees and it's really, really a scorcher. So I stepped into the arcade to get some cold AC. I also got some napkins, because you know what? There's no shame when it's 100 degrees. You gotta do what you gotta do to not have like a heat meltdown. You know what I'm saying? So, pardon me while I dab myself. And if you didn't know the arcade was a thing, well it is. Okay, let's go back out, but I think soon it's gonna be time to stop for lunch and I'm gonna pick somewhere indoors. See how this looks like radioactive sludge is sort of coming out of these and there are these like pipes all around them too. This could really be a lot of different themes. It could be zombies, it could be like apocalypse, it could be just so many different things. What do you think? What's your guess for what this could be? Look at these cool details. Now obviously we can't see what's behind that blue tarp, but I'm gonna guess it's something scary. Something very scary. Let's try to get a look all the way around. This looks like the shape of a, maybe a human, maybe a humanoid type of a thing. I bet there's gonna be steam and fog coming out of it too. And here right in front of Finnegan's and the mummy is another stack of these radioactive barrels. This one's got something even bigger attached to it covered in this blue tarp than the other one. 
This could be like multiple figures, monsters, I don't know. But whatever it is, I bet it's gonna be really, really scary and really, really cool. Now just to the left over here, we've got another of these stands that generally performers and scare actors stand up on to, like I said, they dance, sing, talk to the crowd, um, whatever it is that they're doing that matches the theming of whatever particular scare zone they're in. Just seeing this out already has got me so excited for what Horror Nights is going to be this year. It's such a, it's just, whoa, there's more. This is another one of those stands, but it has a one on it and it looks all like, rugged and distressed sort of like it's got a patina of wear on it and that's right here in front of the M mummy locker station i almost said muppets mummy locker station whoa 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 right here smack dab in the middle of the new york area is a huge stage we can definitely expect a fun show with this scare zone and there are some signs here pardon our dust we are in the process of transforming our park for universal orlando's halloween horror nights the nation's premier halloween event Please do not climb. I love this. That's a lot of progress. And it looks great. Let's try to see how much of this I can I can show you. There's it's a very very crowded day. Lots of people around, but I'm just waiting for some nice clear shots to give you a view of it because this is just so cool. Now, if you look over here on the side of it, you see that symbol again that we saw over on the other theming and it's like a sideways eyeball with these like lines through it and these like radioactive lightning looking things coming out of it if you have any clue or any guesses any fun guesses as to what you think this could be i really feel like it could be like a radioactive zombie post-apocalyptic type of a thing because they've done that kind of thing in this area before and it works really well but I just want to know what everybody else thinks. It's very like scary, government-controlled, post-apocalyptic, 1960s, I don't know, type of a feeling. Let's take a little bit of a closer look at this so that you can be as excited as I am and feel like you're here with me. And then it's time for lunch because I'm hungry, it's hot, it's time. Let's eat. I feel like that eyeball is looking at me. Does anybody else feel like it's looking at them? That's called a sideways glance right there. Get it? Is the eyeball sideways? So there's some more of this going on here right in front of the mummy. This also looks like it is made for some performers and scare actors to stand up there and also some props to go here and here. Or maybe other scare actors to stand in there. I don't know, but definitely there's space for something here and space for something there or someone. Finnegan's is my go-to, my favorite restaurant here at Universal Studios, and I'm gonna see if they have a table. I went ahead and got myself a seat at the bar because there is a long wait for tables, but there just happened to be a bar seat open, so I'm gonna scan the menu, and you can do the same by holding your phone up to that right there, and I'm gonna decide what we're having for lunch. Finnegan's is my absolute go-to. They have good food, good service, good drinks, Cool atmosphere, sometimes live music. Sometimes I try to show different options so that you can see all the dining options here. But on a day like today, where it's 100 degrees, I'm melting, I wanna be inside, and I wanna know I'm getting good food, Finnegan's is the only answer. And it looks like we've got some live music starting up. It really livens up the atmosphere in here. I love it. My lunch has arrived. This is the Dublin chicken sandwich, marinated grilled chicken breast with aged cheddar cheese and apple smoked bacon on a toasted bun with lettuce, tomato, and pickle, and wedge fries. It already smells and looks so good. I love this giant pickle on top. This is a full-blown chicken breast here. This looks great, wow. That was a delicious sandwich. That's definitely gonna be another go-to for me, but for now, we're gonna go to outside. Since you walk out of Finnegan's and the first thing you see is the mummy, I wanted to let you know that single rider lines are back pretty much everywhere, including at the mummy. And they've added these new barricades that say Museum of Antiquities. Really nice theming, much better than the generic barricades. I like that they did this. 
just coming out of Finnegan's and taking one more look at all of the Halloween Horror Nights theming and setup that is all over this area. This scare zone is like, it's getting prepped. I was just about to cut down this alley and I noticed another of those toxic barrel HHN theming things. By the way, when I say HHN, obviously that is short for Halloween Horror Nights, but look, there's more. Let's get a little bit of a closer look. This one's in the alley. There's not a lot around it. It's again got a front portion that's covered in blue, probably a mannequin or a prop or some part of it they don't want us to see yet. Maybe it'll spoil the surprise. Who knows, but it's definitely like toxic barrels of sludge and ooze and definitely something apocalyptic or post-apocalyptic. Definitely something toxic, you know? What is this, like an evil secret company that is like sludging everywhere to turn them into monsters or zombies? I can't help but just let my mind run wild. That is so cool. I didn't even see this one at first. I only see it as I'm walking back away. Everything else is that away. This looks super sus. I feel like we know who we have to call, right? By the way, did anybody notice my Slimer bracelets? It's a thing, it's a thing, come on, it's a thing. On another note, I love the theming in this alley. It's just immaculate. The whole New York area of the park, I feel like, is just the best themed area. Do you agree? What's your favorite themed area in Universal Studios, Florida? Anyway, super fun to see all of this out. I'll keep reporting on it, reporting. I'll keep, you know, bringing you videos about it and checking it out, posting photos on my Instagram and just kind of making videos because it's really fun to me. Look at these posters, like, are they not perfect? It's just gorgeous. The New York theming is so immaculate, they've even got pigeons. Just kidding, those are Florida pigeons. Hey, buddy. They can even climb steps, Florida pigeons. Look at this, he's just showing off at this point. He can go up, he can go down, he can peck everything. Also very slim and trim. It's a good looking pigeon right there. Looks like they're starting to set up for the parade already. They put these out to block basically the streets off, line everybody up on the side, the parades go through. They only recently came back. I did a video on them. If you wanna see that, it's up on the channel. Getting those ropes ready to roll out. Oh, looks like it's parade time, so let's just hop in here and get in it. I love when you see the parade gates open and a parade pop out. This happens during Mardi Gras. It also happens during the daily parades and special events. And it, look at SpongeBob, he is waving hard. All right, so this is just the mini parade. There's little mini parades and then bigger parades. So this is just the SpongeBob mini parade. Patrick and Squidward. There is something else important that I want to do today. Sam's birthday is coming up. I don't know if he's going to be here or I'm going to have to mail the gift to England. So I need to do that birthday shopping a little early and there's something special I want to pick up from him for him. Here. I'm not gonna show you exactly what it is because then he'll see it because he watches the videos. But I'll show you where I'm going so we can look at some other stuff in there. Let's go shopping. All right, now that we've seen the little mini SpongeBob parade, we're gonna pop into the Williams of Hollywood prop shop. We're gonna do a prop shop pop. We've still got the Men in Black Scarecrow stock figure. Very, very cool. Let's see what else we got. I think maybe some new dolls have been added, maybe. So I've showed this recently, but just in case you didn't see it, they've got some of the uh, Scarecrow stock figures from Halloween 2020. These are just beautifully detailed, gorgeously made, one of a kind props from a very, very interesting year that will never happen again. Many of these props are priced at you know, the prices of, of props, of theme park props that are one of a kind, handcrafted, and you can't get anywhere else, and only one person can own this, or organization. So for collectors, these are quite a find. 
But they have a lot of really cool stuff. I need to purchase something though. They even have the brochures here from like past events from the Scarecrow stock, which I have thankfully because now they're for sale. They even have one of the Mardi Gras food signs. Okay, I've done my shopping. Let's go. I popped back into the Five and Dime to say hi to the monsters and also purchase a Powerade because the heat will get you, so it's really good to stay hydrated. Hydration, good friend, good. By the way, on a hot day, if you want ice cream, Schwab's has been open. There was a period of time where I feel like it wasn't open or it didn't have regular hours, but lately I've been seeing it open, so. That's always good. Well, that was really cool. A lot of fun, exciting things happening. I have a feeling that they are gonna keep rolling out more and more Halloween Horror Nights 2021 theming throughout the park. There's gonna be more like construction updates, pieces of theming and equipment and things that are gonna be installed into the park for scare zones and houses, facades, and just different bits and pieces. So there will be more updates of all sort of what's happening, what's coming, and what's new here at Universal Orlando Resort. And I'm really excited for my second Halloween in a row, actually living in Orlando, as opposed to four hours away in Miami where I used to live, and actually being here for all of it. But my first like real Halloween season, because last year, was really, really different, really interesting, trying, but also special and made some amazing memories. But, you know, my first real full Halloween season here will be this year, and I am very, very excited for it. So, I'm gonna be bringing you all the fun, all the cool stuff happening, and all the prep and excitement leading up to it. And just remember, like I said earlier, even if you're scared of Halloween Horror Nights, I ain't afraid of no ghosts, right? <laughs> It's not that helpful, is it? No, but I say this to people all the time. There's a different element of fandom for Halloween Horror Nights rather than just being scared, having fun. The IPs, like the movies that they bring in, Stranger Things, Ghostbusters, Halloween, all of that. Besides that, there's another level. Just the same way there's another level at Disney when you're into Imagineering and history and the making of attractions. When you think about Halloween Horror Nights that way, the making of these events, the storytelling, the creative teams, the props, the storehouses, the people who make, paint, and source, all of the art and creative pieces that go into the houses, the scare actors, everybody who's part of this, when you think about this as a major themed event, all the creativity and behind the scenes, I feel like it takes on another level rather than just like a super fun, amazingly themed event, which it is, to a huge effort put together by a huge team of creative and passionate people to share with a huge audience of also creative and passionate people. So it is, it's like, it's a community. It's more than just an event. So with that, I'm gonna go. There are a lot of exciting and fun things coming up on the horizon. I do, I cover a wide variety of topics on the channel, not just Halloween Horror Nights, but all sorts of fun things. Disney World, Universal, all over Florida, travel around the US, other countries, all of it. So you'll find like a nice assortment of things here and I'm always happy to hear from you in the comments as to what you think, what you liked, and just, you know, what you think. I already said that, but yeah, what you think. So, if you're new here and you enjoy this sort of thing, please subscribe to join in all the future fun. Once again, I thank you all so much for joining me. I'm sending you all a ton of love. I'll see you for the next video and until then, as always, stay enthused.